Hi, it's Dr. John Raymond Baker, DC, and today I'm doing kind of an extended version of the video I did yesterday about Reginikin, and I'm doing it for a couple of reasons. One, I don't think that I really did justice to the topic, which is a serious topic, and two, I really think that you guys deserve a better video than I did yesterday. Not that it's a bad video, but I think that it's, this one will be a little bit better, more explanatory. And in the interim, between the uh, time I did the video yesterday and the video today, I watched video from Dana White, who underwent the procedure, he's an MMA artist, and Dr. Peter Velling, who's the primary um, provider of this treatment. And uh, also a video by Dr. Ro Ross Hauser, who is a, a promoter of the uh, prolotherapy treatment. And as I understand, prolotherapy is in some ways com competitive with uh, the Regenokine, so I wanted to produce both, uh, present both sides. Now my voice is about to go out today, so if you'll excuse me, I'll drink some coffee and try to model through this. Basically, the Regenokine is a case in which they take withdrawal blood from you, the patient. They incubate it, increase the temperature of it, and then they centrifuge it to fractionate the uh, red blood cells from the yellow portion, which is going to have the, the good stuff. The uh, proteins and, and the elements that they want to use to cause a good effect. And the amount of blood that they withdrew, I, that was another problem I had yesterday because at one site they said that they withdraw two um, fluid ounces and uh, 59 milliliters and yet Dana White in his video had a large bottle of water or drink and he said they took got three of those uh, full of blood from him with a straw with the uh, with a needle as he described it the size of a soda straw so in dispute is how much blood they withdraw but it of no dispute is the fact they withdraw blood, they do something to it, and they re-inject it in you. And as I said yesterday, the price is about $7,500. Uh, because it's not covered by insurance, you have to pony up the money for the treatment. Now, I want to address uh, Dana White's video. Dana was extremely enthusiastic, and you know, if he was having a lot of pain, now he's out of pain, I can understand why. It's kind of like what I call the new convert phenomenon is that whether you find a new software or a new religion or a new treatment that you get good results, you want to share that and you become a real proponent of it. And uh, if Dr. Velling is looking for someone to be a salesperson for his procedure, I would consider Dana because Dana does a good job. Also, Dana did uh, one thing that he uh, mentioned a lot of the celebrities who've taken advantage of this procedure, Kobe Bryant, Alex Rodriguez, Dana White, uh, he didn't talk about it, but Joe Rogan did. He also talked about Pope Paul II because Pope Paul II couldn't kneel anymore. He got the procedure done. And uh, George Clooney apparently couldn't raise his arms up too high as he had the procedure done and implied was that all these people got a good effect from it, good outcome. Um, and then also, to be fair, watched uh, Dr. Uh, Ross Hauser's video about comparison between orthokine and uh, regenokine and prolotherapy. Now what is prolotherapy? Prolotherapy, also called proliferation therapy, is has been around for a while and basically it works on the principle that you use an irritant, a mild irritant, to cause inflammation but also cause healing and they use dextrose sugar water basically is that mild irritant. Uh, Dr. Hauser says that it causes healing. Dr. Uh, on one of the videos I saw of Dr. Peter Veller, Velling said that it causes uh, stem cells to migrate to the area with uh, regenokine, uh, that it causes muscles to rebuild. And honestly, I don't know whose claim is really right. Maybe they're both right, maybe they're both wrong. I don't know. But uh, 
let's deal with the reginokine for a second. The theory is that by injecting these elements, and they, they're really never very specific on the cytokines or what they are, but the hope is that it blocks the um, pain receptors and also blocks the interleukin-1 from doing more damage. Dr. Velling's theory apparently is that, that the problem with osteoarthritis is that it's an inflammation, essentially a chronic inflammation that has never stopped, and that the interleukin-1 destroys the cartilage. Now, the interleukin-1 being blocked, that's one issue, and the destruction of cartilage is another issue. But one thing that I that I want that Dr. Hauser said, which I also felt the same way, is that if you block the pain, but you don't fix the underlying structural issues, whether it's worn out cartilage or laxity of the joint or whatever, you've really done half the job. But I would even go farther than Dr. Hauser by saying that if you block the pain and thus people are taking worn out joints and continuing to use that joint as if it's new again, you're actually uh, causing them to put more abuse, extreme wear and tear on a joint that's already worn out. And by not having that safety mechanism of the pain, you've essentially um, got them to use a joint that really shouldn't be used that much even more, which is going to hasten the, hasten the deterioration and degradation of the joint, and which, in my estimation, and, and I haven't done the, the Regenokine nor the prolotherapy, but if you take a worn out joint, you erase the pain so that they don't have that natural blockage to using the joint, you're going to take that joint and wear it completely out. Now let's be clear about what's wrong with these joints. They're not just healthy joints that have developed pain because of the, the amino and interleukin-1 actions. They're joints that, for a lot of part, have lost the normal alignment, the normal function, and the normal padding, whether you're talking about spinal joints or shoulder joints or knee joints, and thus you've got, in some cases, bone-on-bone -bone wear. The shearing forces, as Dr. Hauser points out, the shearing forces that wear it out are not going to be stopped because now you don't have pain. But they're also not going to be stopped because you flood the area with dex dextrose and, and you cause some proliferation of cells to the deal. They're not, they're, to my way of thinking, short of a miracle, you're not going to have a total rebuilding of an ACL. You're going to have a total rebuilding of the uh, condyl of the various cartilaginous structures. Um, if you've got a joint in the spine that has osteophytes, the intervertebral disc has collapsed. I don't care which treatments you use of the two, you're not going to have the complete rebuilding and newification. I'm going to make a word new ne neologism. You're not going to have a rebuilding, a total rehabilitation of that joint just by using either one of those processes. You're not going to cause big old spurs, osteophytes, to just magically dissolve. If I'm wrong, I'd certainly like to see that, but I've done a fairly decent due diligence of uh, the documentation. Haven't found that claim nor that, uh, that fact proven. So, with either the... Uh, prolotherapy or the regenokine, you're, you might decrease the pain, you might get some proliferation of healing um, cells in there, but you're not going to get a new joint again. And if it's a bad joint and you keep wearing it, you're going to wear it completely out and then you are going to have to have surgery or something more drastic than injections. Now, to give you, if you didn't see my video yesterday, Orthokine and Regenokine both have Dr. Peter Velling as their primary uh, enthusiastic pro, uh, provider. Uh, Orthokine was patented by Dr. Uh, Julio Reinecke and Dr. Peter Velling. And Dr. Peter Velling is, is practicing in Dusseldorf, Germany, I believe, with Jens Hartmann. 
at his uh, practice there, which is the main place where you get the Regenikine. So people like uh, Dana White, um, Kobe Bryant, A-Rod as they call him, uh, George Clooney, they're all going to uh, Germany as far as I understand. But there's another gentleman, Dr. Chris Renna, that I believe is also providing this procedure and has uh, clinics in California and uh, Texas, I believe. One in Texas, Dallas, I believe. But again, it's not approved by the FDA, so you're not going to get payment from uh, your insurance company. So you're going to have to lay out $7,500 to ten grand. Um, cash or however you want to handle it, but it's going to come out of your own pocketbook. Um, so there, no matter how um, enthusiastic the new converts are, and, and honestly, I've had chronic pain myself. It can cause you to be depressed, and if you're a professional sports person, sport professional athlete, that your income comes about by only by your avail your ability to perform athletic events, then taking away that pain so that now you can push yourself to do the job, yeah, I can understand why that they would see that as a godsend and see that as something that's well worth the money. If you're making over a million dollars a year, seventy five hundred dollars and a trip to Dusseldorf is not a big deal. However, if you're some poor Joe Schmo who uh, has a bad disc and working as a baker or a cook or a, or a carpenter or whatever, $7,500 is a lot of money. And uh, basically you'd be going all the way to Germany to get pain relief. And it's not pain relief that's going to last forever. It might last for five years. As I said yesterday, I believe they asked people to uh, have a and with the Regenikine or an Orthokine, um, an annual booster or redo it, if you will. Now, one thing that I, that I was a bit concerned about on Dana White's video was that Dana talked about uh, what I understood him to say, curing of his Meniere's disease. And uh, honestly, I can't see how knee or back injection of your own cells is going to cure Meniere's disease. He also talked about someone having Parkinsonism and getting relief from that. Now, Dr. Velling talked about this being this procedure being used in racehorses, and racehorses having a good effect, and saying, "Well, there goes the placebo effect if racehorses have a good effect." However, there was another procedure I discussed yesterday: PRP, platelet-rich plasma, where the, there's an attempt to cause a proliferation of platelets and I won't go into how they use that but essentially from what I understand um, the subsequent studies that were double blind or the studies that were done I can't remember if they did them double blind or not really showed no better uh, outcome than placebo or saline solutions instead of the PRP plasma so you know, if it's something that deals with, oh, and I wanted to back up too. Um, Dr. Velling is of the opinion that the real problem with osteoarthritis is inflammation. Now, usually you look at osteoarthritis, which is technically inflammation of a joint, but there's inflammatory types and non-inflammatory types, or autoimmune types and non-autoimmune types. Osteoarthritis is generally called a DJD, degenerative joint disorder. It just literally is worn out. And we usually talk about it's a mechanical problem that the joint biomechanics have gone awry and now because they're not functioning correctly, wear the joint out faster than it would normally if you maintain good joint biomechanics. Um, but then you have things like rheumatoid arthritis where you do have the rubor, color, dolor, tumor, the swelling, the hotness, the redness, and the pain. And also there's the fifth one that was added by Celsus, uh, added by Galen to the traditional four of Celsus of Rubor, dolor, tumor, color, 
of uh, functio lysa, which is loss of function. But not everybody that has inflammation has loss of a body part's function. But I digress. Um, but with rheumatoids, you have the swelling, the heat, the pain, immobility of joints, because it is an inflammatory type of arthritis. You also have other types of arthritis that are inflammatory, where the joints swell up, they get warm to the touch, etc. Osteoarthritis is usually not that way, not the common everyday garden variety of osteoarthritis. Now, is there inflammation in that joint? Of course, you have the word arthritis, which implies inflammation of the joint. However, it's inflammation of a type that is certainly different than rheumatoid or psoriatic for that, for that uh, matter. So I wanted to um, um, kind of talk candidly about the treatment in a, in a more um, frank fashion. And I enjoyed Dr. Velling's video fighting back. He doesn't really strike me as a person that would give that title. He's a very mild-mannered, soft-spoken gentleman, kind of your traditional German scientist, a bit introverted. Um, seemed like a really nice guy. Dr. Ross Hauser seems like a nice guy, too. They just have different approaches that they're trying to promote, and I understand that. And I understand that I'm trying to promote my approach which is dealing with the underlying biomechanics that cause the problem that if you don't fix will continue to cause the wear and tear of the joints. Whether it's loss of the curve in the neck or whether it's loss of the curve in the spine, the muscles spasm up, guard the area, and then instead of bending and flexing in the neck and low back as it should, like that, it starts to pounding on there and that's going to wear things out. It's going to wear the cartilage out. It's going to wear the disc out. And uh, then if you get where it's worn out, you're going to have pain. Yeah, you're going to have pain. And whether you deal with that pain with Oxycontin or Hydrocodone or, or Neurontin or Lyrica or whatever painkiller you're using, the pain is not really the problem. Although the pain is the thing that limits you and bugs you and causes you to seek treatment, the underlying thing is that you've lost the proper function of the joint and you've lost the structural integrity and the proper function. So that has to be restored as much as you can. And then, you know, you they're not mutually exclusive. You can worry about the pain, you can worry about the function of the joint, but to worry about the pain without worrying about the function of the joint is really to go down the wrong road in my opinion. So with uh, due respect to Dr. Velling, due respect to Dr. Hauser. Um, chiropractic has been around since 1895. We're the largest drug-free treatment plan or program or healthcare system in the United States. And uh, if you get hurt in the wreck, hurt on the job, or you're just hurting, it's not the pain that's the real problem. Come and try to get to the root of the problem, the cause. Baker Chiropractic, Longview, Texas. We're easy to find, we're across from the courthouse. Thanks for watching my video. Have a great day. Bye-bye.